The more that I use Lightroom on my iPad and my iPhone and on the desktop, the more I discover tools and features that even though they're kind of there in plain sight, they're almost always overlooked. And in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about one of probably the most underrated features in Lightroom. And I'm gonna show it to you on my iPad, but I'm also gonna show you why the whole Lightroom cloud ecosystem is important because what we do on the iPad will sync to the cloud and be available on every other device. So let's check that out. All right, so here you can see, this is a photo I took a very long time ago, back in October of 2011 in Port Townsend, Washington. Um, and it, I, I mean, I like the shot. I think it's a, a cool shot. Um, I absolutely love the moody look to it, but the thing is that, and you can probably relate to this too, so 2011, it's now 2023, and a lot of time has passed. And in that time, a lot has changed with me as a photographer. A lot has changed with the tools that I have uh, at my disposal. Uh, a lot has changed with my camera gear. And so when I look at photos like this one on my iPad, you know, when I look at it today, I can appreciate what, um, you know, what I did, the kind of, you know, as the photographer back then, but as far as my kind of sensibilities and my sense of aesthetic, this isn't a photo I necessarily would want to share in this particular form, uh, you know, with this stylization treatment. And here's where the, the tool that I referenced comes into play. Now, this icon has been here uh, for as long as I can remember in Lightroom. It's, it's on the iPad. It's, it's kind of hidden on the iPhone, uh, and it's also on the desktop. But... It's right here, um, and it's that little kind of, it looks like a clock with a, an arrow going counterclockwise, and it's called versions. So this is versions, and if you're wondering what is a version, it's kind of what it sounds like. The closest equivalent to the Lightroom Classic world is a snapshot, and it allows you to create what it exactly is, a snapshot or a version of the exact state of the photo at its current time and place. So you'll see on the top, there are two tabs. There's named and then there's auto. And I'll show you uh, each of them in a minute, but I'm gonna start with named. And the reason why I like named is because it kind of gives you the ability to, um, to, to name it and to create different versions as you go along. So what do I mean by that? Well, obviously I don't want to get rid of this. Uh, this edit. I actually want to keep it. I want to kind of keep it as a, um, you know, to, to kind of audit how I've grown as a photographer. Maybe I want to come back to this or see what I did back then. And so first, let me show you if I go to the develop module and then I tap and hold on the image. This is the original uh, unedited image, but it's not the original uncropped image. So I'll show you that in a minute as well. Um, this is the the processed version that I that I have. So if I go to versions here, and I click on this blue create version button and it gives me the ability to name it. So I'm just gonna call this 2001 edit and then I'm gonna click on create. And now you can see I have this uh, new version that I created today. It shows you that was created on the tablet, which is cool. It also shows you the date and time as well as the name that you just provided. Now, what I can do is I can tap on um, the original and there is that original photo, um, unedited and fully uh, uncropped. And if I tap on the version that I created, it, it goes right there. And so if I want to, I can click on apply on the top there and it will apply that version and it brings me to the develop module. So what does this mean for us as photographers? Well, it allows you now to experiment with different presets, different treatments, different crops, uh, and you don't have to worry about overriding other options. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna go back to versions here just to show you that I've got um, that version we just saved and I'm gonna tap on original. Then I'm gonna go ahead and tap on apply. And now we have the original unedited photo. So I'm gonna add a completely different treatment to this photo. First, what I wanna do is crop it. So I'm gonna tap on the crop button. And this time I want a square. Let's say I just want to add this to Instagram. So uh, a square one-to-one -one aspect ratio will be better. And I'm just gonna rotate the horizon here just to make sure it's level. And maybe just bring it in just a little bit. So something kind of like that. All right, so the crop is done. I can tap done. And now we have a square crop. And I can go here in the edit module. I can go to color and then let's add a custom white balance here. 
So we get rid of that uh, blue cast from the, the really old ND filter that I was using. Then I'll go to light here and I'm going to open up the exposure a little bit. I'm gonna go to the tone curve, add my requisite S curve over here because you know me, I love my S curves. Uh, let's add a little bit of gray uh, to the, the black point just so that we get that little bit of a vintagey look. Next, I'm gonna go and create a custom mask for the sky. So in the masking mode, I'll uh, tap on the plus icon and I'm gonna select sky. And with the sky selected, I'll go to effects over here and I'm going to add a little bit of dehaze, just to add a little bit of that rich contrast. And I can see now that I have some dust spots from that dehaze, cause why wouldn't I? So that's easy to fix. Let's just click on done to commit that mask. And I'm gonna tap on the little bandaid icon here. And then we can zoom in and just apply some of the remove brush to the image. And that's good for now, so I'll tap on done over here. And I think I found another dust spot. I did right over there. These dust spots, I'm telling you, you can relate to this, right? So now we're okay. And no, we're not because I just found another one right over there. I, you see, I can't, I can't let a dust spot go, especially if I'm showing an editing video. And sometimes I, I just kind of edit out that part, but I, I think it's fun to show the reality of photo editing. I think most people watching can relate with this. So, all right, back to the photo. And so, I mean, this is already looking great. Uh, I can go ahead to detail here. Uh, we can zoom in and I'm gonna add a little bit of sharpening over here just so we get a little bit more detail. And I'm also going to mask that sharpening out. And in case you're wondering how I got that grayscale view um, or this uh, mask view, basically what I'm doing is as I'm dragging with uh, my right thumb, my left thumb is on the screen and it creates this view here so I can see exactly where sharpening is being applied. Basically anything that's white will have sharpening and anything that's black will have the sharpening masked out. And then we'll wrap things up with effects here. Let's add a... Um, a post crop vignette. And to me, this is looking really great. Like this just looks awesome. If I tap and hold, you can see that's again, the cropped unedited version and then our processed version. And now what I can do is go back to versions over here and I can create another version and I can call this 2023 square. And then I'll tap create. Now you can see if I tap on the previous version we just created, Boom, there we go. I mean, everything from that original photo is right here. And if I tap on uh, the version we just saved, it reverts to, with the crop, with the editing and all. And then of course, we've got the original over here. So you can kind of go through this journey. I can go ahead here and I'll tap apply. So we have this here. Um, and if I want, I can try and go to uh, one of the presets and apply a black and white preset just like this and then go to versions, and then I'll create, I'll, I'll save this one, and I'll call this 2023 square VW. And now I have another version. And remember, if you wanna revert back to any other version, you just tap on it, but then you also have to tap on the blue apply button, and that will bring you to that current state. All right, so that was named versions. Remember there were two tabs, there was named and auto. Let me show you what auto is for. So again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the versions uh, mode here and I'm gonna tap on auto. And you can see we have the original and we have the current edits. Now I'm gonna go to the develop module and let's say here I'm going to open up the exposure. I'm basically gonna just do some stuff um, in the light section of the tools. I'll drop the highlights a little bit, I'll drop the shadows a little bit. Um, and I'll drop the black point just a little bit. Now, to commit this version automatically, if I back out to go to the grid view, and then say I go back in and I go to the versions, you can see here that it automatically saved this version. You see today, uh, August 29th at 3.54 p.m. Now, watch what happens if I go back here and I go to color this time. And let's say for um, the color, I'm gonna just cool it off with the, the temperature under the white balance and I'm gonna add a vibrance boost. And then if I go back, go back into the image and then go to versions, you'll see, ah, now there's another version. So this is kind of like, the closest thing I can equate this to is the history panel in Lightroom Classic. It doesn't show you each individual thing you did, 
But the way the auto version works is any changes you make, when you back out, you remember I showed you how I backed out into the grid view, um, that automatically will save a, a version state. And so if you want to kind of create versions automatically instead of manually, you what I would recommend doing is making your changes in the light mode. So here, let me show you. You would make some changes here in the light mode. You'd back out, you'd come back, you'd do some uh, color changes. Uh, you'd back out and you can do some effects changes if that's how you want to um, work with the, um, the auto versions. I prefer the named versions. I, I kind of just like um, working, just doing all of my edits at once and then saving it as a version because I've used Lightroom Classic for many, many years and I can tell you the history state, it's kind of helpful, but having like 50 different steps, like every little move of say the shadow slider, that never really helped me out. So I find this to be a lot more intuitive, especially for people who are newer to Lightroom, who are maybe just getting started or, or they're graduating from some more basic photo editing tools. I find this version of versions to be way more intuitive and just as powerful. So again, here, let's say I'm like, you know what? I wanna go back to the edit I made just before. I tap on that version and there I go. And so just really quickly to recap between those two, auto will create a automatic version of your edits from when you back out. So you make your edits and you back out and go to the grid view, that version will be saved. Named will, won't do that. It will create a version when you go to versions and you tap on uh, save version or create version and then you can name it. So that's, um, that's the key difference between the two. Me personally, I prefer the named versions just because it gives me more control. All right, so here now I wanna just show you on the desktop. So this is the same exact version of Lightroom except I'm on my Mac. There is the exact same photo. Um, and if I double click it to go into it, you can see all of the edits that I made. They're all here, same S curve over here, but here's the coolest part about this. If I go to versions, there we go. There are the named versions that I created on my iPad. There's also the auto versions that we created over here. And if I jump on my iPhone, I can guarantee you those exact same versions will be available. So this to me is the, uh, what it shows the power of working with Lightroom and its cloud-based ecosystem is that you have access, not just to your photos, not just to your edits, but the actual version states of all of your photos. So I think this is just one of the coolest things. I don't know anyone who really ever talked about it. I certainly didn't really use it until not too long ago when I jumped into it and I was like, what is this? So I hope you found this helpful. And here's the thing. If you uh, are really kind of piqued with your curiosity about Lightroom, the cloud-based version, and you wanna learn more, definitely check out my course called Lightroom Everywhere. This is a start to finish course that will teach you absolutely everything you need to know about using Lightroom on your computer, on your tablet, on your phone, and it just will allow you to really get the most out of this very powerful app. So I hope you check it out. The link is in the description below. Of course, your purchase directly supports my small business and I greatly appreciate that. It helps me continue making these videos for you. And I've got this video here if you wanna learn even more about using Lightroom Mobile on the iPad. So I hope you check it out. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified of all future videos. Thanks a lot, everyone.